Hi everyone, it's Catherine here from Cat V Stitches and welcome to my channel. Um, for any newbies, hello! <laughs> I hope you enjoy what you see. This is a channel about cross stitch, sometimes a bit of knitting and sometimes we get visited by one of my many many cats but primarily it is about cross stitch. And for those returning, hello again everybody! <laughs> I had actually planned on doing this update. I think we're, I think we're number 13. And um, I had planned on doing it earlier on in the month, but let's just say things kind of exploded this month and any plans that I did have went out the window. I'm fine, parents are fine, nothing like that. It's just other stuff that's happened. But what I will do is I will, for any of those that are interested, I will keep all of that to the end of the video so for anyone that's just interested in stitching yeah you can just watch the stitching bit and then adios no hard feelings but if you do like what you see please do like and subscribe but anyway like i said this is my channel about cross stitch so let's get down to the cross stitch now, because it has been a month since my last update, I do have quite a bit of stitching to show. So I apologise in advance if this is quite long, but for anybody who is used to my videos, you know that they do tend to be long anyway. So yeah, I don't think I'm going to be booking the trend in this one. So, 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 so. I do say so a lot. I apologise for that, but I don't seem to be able to stop it and I notice it when I'm watching the videos, but yeah. Let's get started. I have my notes. I have my list of things I've stitched on. So let's try and be a bit organised here. And let's start with my finishes because I have two that I have finished. One that was a bit of a surprise and one which was a stitch along that literally has just finished. Now they are both FFOs as well, so that's a fully finished object. However, one I've noticed needs to be re-FFO'd because it's come a bit loose because I don't think I did that great a job in doing it. But that one is my Prairie Moon Stitch Night. There you go. Which <laughs> I just absolutely love this series. So this is Prairie Moon, um, it was a PDF pattern. If you go on their website, they have um, an area called Crypt Club. And so they do these ones, the skeleton ones and the witch ones, and they've got um, <clears throat> some zombie ones. They're just brilliant, I just love them. And they're such an easy stitch. So this is done on 28 count Picture This Plus Haunted. And that's the recommended um, fabric as well and I've used pretty much the called for threads but I have made some substitutions if I haven't had them if I didn't have them I've not really gone out and bought a ton of new silts because it, it uses silts this pattern um, but no I absolutely love it <laughs> now these patterns are very liberal with the quarter and half stitches so you do have to keep an eye out for them but other than that they're just such easy easy stitches and I think they look amazing. So I have done two now in this one. I've done this and I have done... <laughs> that would have been so good if it had been the right way around and I've done this one. So this is Merry Xmas. This is the first one I did, what made me fall in love with them. And now I have done Stitch Night. And I have another one on the go, which I'll show you when we get to whips. First FFO. Next FFO is my Witcher Stitch, Witchy Stitcher, Witchy Stitcher, the Cryptic, Crypt, oh my God. <laughs> my teeth I've, I've had a day today it's the 31st today it's um coming up to three o'clock and i had a big a meeting this morning which is why i'm a bit i'm not usually this neat but um 
yeah so i'm coming down from that um so witchy stitcher the cryptid stitch along the last part was released friday and i started stitching it the next day the saturday and i finished it and fully finished it so there we go boom baby boom so yep absolutely love it there. <sighs> i don't know if that was actually effective that um i meant to actually show you this so this is the last one that came up this is the ho dog or ho dog or however you pronounce it we were actually given a choice of three so it was bigfoot this goat thingy and this well this has already got like the yeti on and bigfoot was never really i've never really been big into bigfoot but i just love this and i thought the green went really well with this because i've been using a toile i've been substituting a toile for everything i can so all the lettering all the names is in a toile and, I, and like all these ac accents here are in a toile and i absolutely love it so i have done this as a just a simple wall hanging just some nice blue fabric on the back can i get it all in yeah there you go i don't know what i'm going to do my friday nights now because <laughs> i've really enjoyed stitching this up because i have no life um, so this has been my Friday night social life. Yep. But no, I, I just absolutely love this. And if she's doing another one, I am definitely going to be signing up for it. Um, yeah. I mean, oh God, the back is a mess, but never mind. Um, you won't see it when it's hung up. This is done on, sorry, this is 28 count Valor picture this plus. Um, yeah. Sorry, I'm just so pleased with it. I just absolutely love it. So there we go. Okay, that's that. And I just need to stop this recording for a second because one of my cats is threatening to go towards the cat litter and we don't want that on here. So I won't be a minute. Okay, sorry about that. It would have made no difference to you, but for me, it's a couple of minutes later. Yes, nobody wanted to hear what was going on then, so... <laughs> I thought for the sake of everybody, I would stop the recording. Right, okay, so I've done my two FFOs, two things I am ridiculously proud of. Um, and so now let's get on to the actual whips. So I'm gonna start with the knitting one because it's right here in front of me. So just to get it out of the way, so um, I don't forget about it. Um, so what I'm doing is, um, actually, let me bring up a picture of what it is I'm doing. It's um, from Fibre, oh God, no, it's gone. Like I said, I have proper brain, fat, brain fry at the moment, so you'll have to bear with me, I do apologise. Let's just bring this up. It's called Mantle Mist, it's by Expression Fibre Arts, and that is what it will look like. I am not doing it in that colourway. Although they, they do gorgeous wool and colourways. They're based in America and I've not really justified myself in actually buying it. But I am, um, so, sorry, let me just show, show this again. You sew the two front panels and then you continue sewing the two. So the two front panels will come down here. And then, I should as well show you this. Then when you have finished both of the front panels, you put them all on the, the needle and then just sew, continue sewing. And then that's your back panel, so it's easy peasy. This is one of the front panels and it's going to be massive, but I want it to be a proper drapey thing like this. So a really nice and cosy thing that I can wear at work or wherever. So I'm not going to be able to wear this at home because the cats would shred it to pieces. But there we go. So this is using my fibre space wool, which I'll put the details in the box, in the description box. But that is one of the front panels. And I am loving this top blue one. This is called Peacock. And that's just working out really well. 
well this is a long-term project this is going to take a while um so this is probably going to be for next winter but it's it's not a complicated knit, it's a relaxing knit. So I tend to do that if I'm just in bed and I just want to chill a bit, you know, I'm not quite ready to go to sleep and I just need something to... Like, I'm, it's almost... Um, it's just so calming, basically. And I'll just do a couple of rows of that and my mind is quietened and I'm just like, oh, right, I'm ready to chill and go to sleep now. But anyway, that's my knitting whip. Now, I've got a box here full of my whips. I'm going to pull them out in no particular order. So let's work our way through. Um, the first one is in this lovely... Um, oh my God. The name's gone out of my head. Is it Love You More, Love you More Studios? It's saying people... Yeah, oh my, it says it there for Pete's sake. It's in this and it is such an apt bag because this is where I keep all my Prairie Moon stuff. So this is the next one I'm doing. It's called Last Tango. Uh, basically, as soon as I finished Stitch Night, I knew I wanted to do another one. So um, I had this in my stash because... Um, anyone who watched my previous video, you know that one of my plans was that I wasn't going to do any new purchases for the first three months. And then at the end of the three months, if I lost a stone in weight, then I could purchase some of the stuff on the list. And I still, I have not purchased any other patterns because this one was already in my stash. Although I'll come to, yeah, we'll discuss that more later. But anyway, um, so this is Last Tango. Um, and I have, um, I'm doing this again on the 28 count. 28 count haunted which both of the other two are on because you know so they matchy matchy and this is what I have done so far there you go so I have done the bottom half of it so this is really the big chunk of stitching so it's her her um Eva skirt or pants or whatever she's wearing and I've done those flowers and I've done his legs and uh, her feet as well and again love it it again such an easy bloody stitch so yeah this one I don't think would take too long if I were to give it a couple of days well more than a couple of days but if I were to stitch on it solidly which I may end up doing because I just really like it but then anyway, yes so that's my first whip <coughs> Oh, I'm really sorry. Excuse me one second. I know I shouldn't really be drinking this Diet Coke, especially with a vocal fry like I have, but sometimes you've just got to do it. So that is whip numero uno. Oh, I've got all my um, silks in there. I'm basically using the same silk pack for each one. next one okay so yes for this we need to quickly go into whip go um whip go as anybody who is following a floss tube at the moment will know um it's the brainchild of jesse marie from jesse marie does stuff and i have decided this year because it's my first full year um of serious cross stitch to actually do it um, and for the first month, let me just bring up my board for you. Uh, we go. For the first month, it was number two and number 19, which for me was a flutter and pointed fist. And basically what I have done is I've set it so that everything on here has... I'm going to do it for five, I know it says five days on there, but it's basically five sessions. Um, so that could that could be maybe 30 minutes or it could be five hours or, you know, eight hours or whatever. But for this month, like I, for 
January it was Flutter and Pointed Fifth and I have done it for both of them. Yay! <laughs> this is in a new bag that I made for myself. I don't think I've shown this. Um, again, it's use, it's the envelope project bag, the Vona Pfeiffer. Tutorial and I just added this here and a button on it. Although I think there's two buttons on it for when you don't when you need more space and it's a it's a big one so I can fit my full coverages in here oh and as I have on other bags I've got these gorgeous little pins I don't know can you see that there we go is it gonna there you go these are from Emma Carpenter from Etsy and I'll put her details in the box below because she also does some gorgeous stickers which I can show you actually I've got on my diary it's the these um plant ones here she does and i think i've got some and these on the back oh this is this is a great diary this i've always struggled to find myself a non-work oh <laughs> my shit's creek stuff on there <laughs> Ooh, david um I've always struggled to find a really good diary for myself. Um, I'm not a journaler. Um, I just never found one that worked because for work I use Outlook. But I, did, I don't like using that for my life. And then I was in John Lewis here in the UK and I found this diary. And what it does is it gives you the full month at a glance there and there's my whip go there where I'm tracking the days that I've done so it gives you the full month there and then after that it breaks the week up into um so that's one full week so what I'm doing is this in green is what I've worked on my cross stitch here which is the notes I'll put what I want to do in that week so dentist um renew driving license renew pet insurance and all that kind of stuff and for the first time ever I found a diary system that is working for me and then I've just got these in there which are daily tasks so yeah sorry just went off on a tangent but yeah absolutely brilliant diary there so this is um, a John Lewis own one but anyway sorry back to the stitching made this myself this is the outside material that's the inside and in here are my full coverages. So the one I have worked on is Flutter, which was on my whip go. There we go. We've come back. <laughs> we went off on a little side road there. You may have thought I got lost, but I brought us back onto the main road. So now let me just find Flutter. It's in here somewhere. Yes. So what I will do is I will insert in for all of those that I well for all of those where there are pictures of what it was like the last time I showed you which will be the beginning of January because I did a whip parade then I will insert in a picture somewhere to show you what it looked like so if I forget to say it I will insert in a picture where there is one available so this I've done quite a bit on this because like I said it was um, on to do five sessions in the month I've done my five and in fact I think I might have done an extra day because I was really enjoying it excuse the threads excuse creases because I don't iron until they're actually done but here we go I have worked on filling in all of this here and this here and I've done more of the black up there so that head is really starting to take shape. But what I've not done <laughs> is showing you what it's supposed to look like. Oh, yeah, a bit out of practice. So let me quickly show you that. So you'll have handily seen what it was last time, what it's like at the moment. And now, where are they? Where are they? There we go. And this is what it should look like then it is done Can you see that? there you go so this is heaven and earth design marjorie sarnet and it is flutter and as you've seen i'm working 
here at the moment. I'm not looking forward to all of this because it is basically two shades of white and I am doing this on white easy grid. This is a 25 count and I'm doing it one over one so it's one full cross over one and there you go but once I get started on I have actually done some of the white you can see little bits here but I've I'm being a bit cowardy about it and just feel just been doing everything around it but yeah absolutely love it I'm doing this um cross country but work but working kind of like that and then I'll do some colours here, then I'll do some more black, then I'll do some more colours going down here, then I'll do some more black. So I'm not just doing black, 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 because there's tons of it on here. But yeah, so that is Flutter. So I really enjoyed that. So let's just pop that down there for now, but I need that bag for in a minute. Next, we have... Um, ah, aha, we have amethyst. Ah, do you know what? Bear a minute, I we're crossing these off. So, what have I showed you? I've shown you Tango and I've shown you Flutter, I've shown you the Grypted. So, this is amethyst. So, this is my Carolyn Manning. So, let's show you a quick picture. Um, Carolyn Manning. Amethyst. There we go. So this is what this is one of her shooting star collection. It contains the bulk of all my favourite colours. I just purple is my favourite. There we go. Um, I am now over sixty percent done on this now, which I am so happy about. So I do have another one of hers on the go, which is ruby. But what I and. What I had originally said was that I would, once I got to 50% on Amethyst, I would start on Ruby. And I did start on it. I have done a little bit on it. But I've now decided that I actually want to finish Amethyst. I just want to get it done because I, I'm just loving it. I want it to be a finished product. Then I will start on start back on Ruby. So we're on about 63, 64% now on Amethyst. So let me get this the right way. Here we go. So there we have it. Ah. <laughs> so this is on a 14 count Ada. Oh, yep, yeah, there we go. Ooh, no, it's all right, you can't see anything. There we go. Oh, and don't step on that. <laughs> She's stepping on the cross stitch. Let me put that. Sorry, let me move that a little bit. Um, yeah, so wrong way. There we go. No, oh, is that the wrong way now? Hang on. Hang on a mo. It's this way. <laughs> um, yes, it is. It's this way. Oh, boy. There we go. Okay, so we are now on 60-odd percent of this, and I can literally taste the finish line on it. So, yeah, very happy with that. Um, my plan is to make a pillow out of this when it's finished and for the other ones I've got two others in this series the shooting star series and I'm going to do exactly the same with them make them into pillows so yeah you would have seen the picture of where it was last time but that is amethyst okay let's cross that off the list next this might not be that long a video actually, I'm keeping the pace going here. Right, so this is, right, this is Plum Street and this is Buzz Off. So this is what it is going to look like when it is finished. And this is what it currently looks like and you'll be seeing what it was like well in fact honestly i won't even bother inserting the picture because what it looked like last time is i'd just done the crow so since then i have done 
I've started working on the hive or bee skept or whatever you call them that's underneath it. So, yeah. So this is on the called for fabric, which is, it's 36 count vintage beeswax. It's not the colour I, I was expecting. I thought it was going to be a lighter colour, but actually I really like it. So that's there. It's the called for threads. However, they recommend one over two. I'm doing it over two over two because I didn't like the coverage. I like a bit of beefy coverage on mine and it's it's not what I would consider a prim one so I'm just going for the full two over two there. I, I just love that bird. How amazing is that bird? So yes I'm going to try and push for a finish on this one because once I've done the um, skep underneath it's just these flowers and the border and I think this could be if not February, maybe March, this could be a finish. And then I've got another one to start, which will be this. I might as well show you it's in here. It's um, Eat Crow. So, yeah. So that is my Plum Street, which I am loving. Yes, I, I say I love them a lot as well. But to be honest, I pick patterns because I, I really like them and love them. And I carry on stitching them because I'm really enjoying it. So... Right, okay, next. Ooh, this is going quite fast. What's in, ah, okay, so this is my Gecko Rouge. Um, no, it's not. <laughs> That's what I'll get for trying to show off by rolling my arms. This is my Lindy Stitcher, Lindy Stitches Mary Mary Needle Worker. Ugh, I'm sorry, I'm a bit tongue-tied as well because I'm on painkillers at the moment, so I'm like, oh. Um, there we go. So I have done pretty much most of all of this. Well, most of all. I've done this border and these here, the butterfly. I've not done these flowers, but it's this bloody skirt that's got me. It's, oh! My cat has just jumped from the table onto the top of the fridge and it's like, what the? She's not done that before. Sasha, down. Right, okay, sorry. And it's the table that's got my um, camera thing on as well. So <clears throat> I wonder what, why she wanted to jump up there. But sorry, never mind. It's that skirt that has me flummoxed on here. Excuse me, and for a while I thought, you know what, I'll do this as my 25, um, 25, 7 piece, so you know, 25 minutes every day. But I kind of, I kind of fell off the wagon, and but I am going to get back onto it because I'm determined to get through this skirt. So, um, one of um, viewers from previous video did leave the suggestion was do a strand in of the skirt and then move on to something else but the problem is with the q-snap i use because i've done everything up here and i'm working on this skirt it would mean the q-snap is q-snap is here and i would have to keep moving the q-snap so i'm gonna think about it but at the moment i've just been working on the skirt so this you'll see what it was like last time you saw it and this is what it is now so as you can see, there's still a significant amount of that to do. And I've not done as much as I thought I'd done. I thought I'd done these scissors here. Ah, well, that's slightly disappointing. <laughs> I really love this pattern and I'm not going to abandon all hope on it. I am going to do it. This is one of, this is something I started towards the start of my stitchy career so I was just doing things on 28 count then if I were to do this again I would do it on maybe a 36 count or possibly yeah probably a 36 count two strands um but I'm not going to abandon this one because I do still I'll I think it's going to look lovely when it's done so um, I'm just going to persevere on that one 
So yes, yeah, so that's um, Lindy Stitches Mary Mary Needleworker. I have bought more of this, which is... Um, I, I know it's Weeks Dye Works. Um, it is Seafoam. So I just got a couple more of it just in case. Because I get the feeling I want to use a lot of it. But I also get the feeling it's going to look mwah, once it's actually done. So there is that one. Okay, so that's Mary Mary. Next up we have... What is this? This is... Ah, this is the Drawn Thread Sunny Side Sampler. This again is on recommended um, fabric, which is 32 count natural, that's what I got. Now, it has a lot of threads on there, and I have done three other drawn threads. So what I've basically done is I've recycled the threads that I used on there and maybe bought one or two extras. But for the most part, it's what's called for. So that's what it's going to look for, going to look like. And this is what I have done so far. So there'll be a picture of what it looked like last time. And this is what it looks like now. And I, yep, you guessed it. I love this one. <laughs> I So drawn thread tends to have, let's just hold this slightly different. Drawn thread tend to have a lot of speciality stitches on them and I really, really enjoy doing them. But what I do is I do all the normal crosses first of all. So I'll do the whole thing with the normal crosses on and I'll come back and do the speciality stitches and I'll come back and do the um, back stitch. So that is really my normal process now. But how cute is that? I know it needs um, back stitching on to finalise it, but already you can see how cute that cat and bird is going to look. So, yeah, that is Drawn Thread Sunny Side Sampler. Just pop that in there. Okay, next. Sunny side, I've done buzz off and stitch night. Aha! Next is the Kraken by Quiltify Design. Now, oh, that reminds me. I got from it's called they're, she's called the Black Wardrobe. Um see if it'll there we go, a black wardrobe. And I got this gorgeous chain from her. There you go. Look at that Kraken attacking a ship. How lovely is that? I don't know if you can see it on me, but I absolutely love this chain because I've become obsessed by the Kraken. So I have that one there by Ink Circles. And so what I've decided to do is to mirror a lot of the colours of that onto this design. So the cracking on here is the same as the cracking on there. And I'm using the same blue that's on there. And I'm also using a purple. To, so on here, the people are the same. The people and the lettering are the same colour as the boat. Well, I've decided to do the people and the lettering in a different colour. And I'll show you that in a second. But this is what I've done so far. Now this, this is on 32 count Amazing Grace. This is um, Witchell. Um, look how cool that is. Love it. So this is the big ship. The Kraken is done completely now. Um, and that big ship is done bar the people and the birds 
so there you go so the threads i'm using i just love it i was working on this last night i just couldn't put it down just wanted to get that ship finished i am using it's gloriana and it is um pacific dark blue for the boat and the the boats and the border will be done using it as well because that's the simulating waves in the border the kraken is dried pink roses it's darker than what it's showing on there and then for the others it will be all alley berry i can't is that going to focus on that there we go and it is this gorgeous colour and again it's darker in real life than what it's showing so those are the three colours I am going to use on here and again I'm going to show it again because I absolutely love it <laughs> there we go and there we go I almost was going to make a um, needle minder out of this but it's I just love it as a chain, so no, I'm not going to make a needle minder out of it. I'm going to keep it as a chain. Um, but yes, that is the Kraken by um, Quiltify Designs. And what I thought I'd do is do a similar frame to what I've done for that one and then just have them as accompanying pieces. Okay. Why do I keep putting this away? Because I'm just going to take a picture of them in a minute. Right, so that is the Kraken. And again, I'm sure pictures would have been inserted somewhere. Okay, next. My two long dogs. One of which was my other whip go. And the other I just decided to do. So... Let's look at the whip go one first of all, and this is pointed fifth. So let me just insert in a let me not insert in a picture. So let me just show you what this is going to look like. Um, long dog. There we go. So that is there we go. That is what it will look like when it is complete, and I am working up here. So this was, as I said, on my whip go for five sessions. Done my five sessions and I'm using 32 count. Um, it's another witchel. Oh, what's it called now? I, uh, I can't remember. I can't, actually, I think I might have got my fabrics wrong on... Um, let me just give me one second let me get this right for you so whips so for the kraken right okay sorry <clears throat> that's my fault this is vintage gray the kraken and this is amazing grace witchel so there we go let's get the right and i'm using a um silts for you one so there we go. So that is my five sessions on pointed fifth. And I think that purple is just lovely on this um, Amazing Grace fabric. And I'm absolutely loving it. Now there is a mistake in here. I'm not going to say where it is because I decided that I was absolutely fine with it. And I made the mistake, was absolutely gutted about it managed to fudge it and then got disheartened and put it down for a week I was I was on day three basically and then a week later I took it back up looked at it and I couldn't even see where the mistake was at first I really had to kind of like look at it and I was like oh well pff. obviously it's if I couldn't even notice it there you go so took it back up and really loved it I just love this kind of repetitive stitching like this it just Zen, you know, nice and zen. But there you go. Pointed fifth. Um, so that will go away for a little bit now. I'm sure I will take it out again. 
but um, I've done a good five days in it, so I'm happy with that. And while I'm here, I will show you my other one, which is You Belong To Me. Now, this hasn't quite had five days on it. Um, let me go back to... Here we are. And this is what this looks like. There we go. Again, I'm working up here. Nope, sorry, I'm working up here. Um, and again, I made a mistake. So this is on, this is on the same as what the Kraken is, which is the 32 count vintage grey. And this is using just DMC. Well, not just DMC because it's lovely. Um, let me just find out what number it is. It's DMC 718. Oh, and the thread that I'm doing pointed fifth with, as I said, it's a silks for you. And it is this gorgeous thing. Silks for you PR158. There we go. Here we go. So, two things happened on this. First of all, um, and again, I need to thank one of my wonderful viewers who told me about this. Um, I can't remember if it's from the video I did or from Instagram, but she let me know, and I should have noticed this myself really, but she let me know that there was an error. So this is a public announcement just for anyone else who has this pattern and who is going to download it onto Pattern Keeper. There is an issue, um, the break between pages one and two. So here's page one and I think it's, I think it's somewhere here, page one ends. And it's basically cut out a line, um, I'm sorry, a column of stitches. And I didn't realise, and I basically carried on stitching a little bit across here and carried on stitching the rest of this bird, but it was all out by one. So I had, to, so I was like, oh, I'm going to have to unpick all of this part here and i would not done all of this but i had done you know i had done a bit here i'm gonna have to unpick it and in fact i think i've inserted a picture in here of what what i had done so i had to unpick that and um so i unpicked it corrected it carried on stitching came down here and carried on stitching this only to realize that i've done an extra extra one here but it's fine this is not something that needs to be unpicked. It's just literally a case of, I'll just bear it in mind as I'm stitching it. You know, I've not, all of this here has been counted off this bottom row here. So there's nothing missing from here. The pattern's absolutely fine. So, you know, if I hadn't have said anything, nobody would have known, but I just wanted you to see that there are some, unfortunately you have to because it knocks everything off. And you just have to bite that bullet and pick it out. And for other mistakes, even though, you know, when you look at it, you think, oh my God. But for others, it's easy to fudge. So on both, on pointed fifth there, the mistake I made on that, it was easy to fudge. And I can't, I have to really look to see where that mistake is. And on this one, it's absolutely fine. But yeah, I love that. I think, again, the choice of killer is really popping on this fabric so i'm very happy with that so this one is on my whip go board i think it's pointed fifth on it again or is that only on there once i can't remember because i know some of them are on twice let's have a look because i'm curious now so i'll drag you along for the ride um so you belong to me is you belong to me oh no you belong to me is only on there once it's not called yet so i'll have five days on that and um yeah pointed fifth is only on there once but you know i can pick them out whenever i want to do them i'm not only going to stitch them when they're called up on whip go 
But yeah, they're my two long dogs. And have you seen the new one? If you've not, go and have a look straight away. I, I'm, it's on my list of things I'm going to buy. But I'm not going to buy it just yet because I've still got these two to do. So, Plus I've got the big red ship from Ink Circles I need to get done. But it's another glorious pattern. So I think it came out maybe a week or so ago. And it is, it's, it's, it's absolutely lovely. And there's my other long dog there, just in case you hadn't guessed. That's Pilgrim there. That's um, on 28 count, just cream. And it's um, using Peacock from Mrs. Sadas. Okay, so I do have, I think, one more. Excuse me. So that one was You Belong to Me and Pointed Fifth. And then we have, now this is my gecko rouge. Um, so this is Wind of Change. It's a triptych. It's by Jessalyn Park. So these are the three. So there's, let me do it in order. So this is part one, which is the one I'm working on. Then we've got part two, and then we've got part three, and these are actually life size, so that is how big it is going to be um, when it's done, because I've got 28 count, and I'm doing it one over, no, sorry, I'm doing two over one half stitch or ten stitch, um, and it will literally be, each each panel will be that size. So these are coming packs with all the threads. And I've got tiniest of start on this. And when I say tiniest of start, I truly do mean the tiniest of start. <laughs> I'm actually trying the parking method for this, doing it the diagonal um, method to see how that works out. I will keep you updated. <laughs> But yeah, so that's my gecko rouge. I just fell in love with that picture, basically, and that was a Christmas present to myself. Um, and I think that is it for my whips. So, let's, that's finishes done, whips done, my knitting done. So let's move on to plans and whip go for February. Numbers were called, um, and the numbers are 5 and 17. And for me, that is Autumn on Lazy Bear Mountain and um, another Heaven and Earth one called Evening. So let me show you those very quickly. Um, it is... Here we go. Oh, love these bags. Um is bought from Etsy um not enough whip um bags or something like that I'll put the details in the in the box below so this is Kathy Barrett autumn on lazy bear mountain that's why I've been working over here and so far it looks like that so I'll put in, I'm doing this on 40 count um, vintage country mocha uh, using one strand. So, yep. Yeah. So that's five sessions on this. And then the other one is evening, which is, where is it? Oh, where have I put it? Ah, it's here. <laughs> so this is on Q Snap. Um, da -da -dum. picture, picture, picture. Here we go. I'll just show you this. There we go. So this is a mini, mini evening by that person there, who I'm not going to insult by completely butchering his name. But yeah, absolutely love this one. 
and this is where we're up to on it so this one i'm doing via cross stitch cross stitch <laughs> cross country this is on 28 count easy guide or, or whatever it is it's called and i'm doing this 10 stitch so two over one there we go so that's my other one that i will be doing five days or five sessions okay so those obviously will be done in february but i also have three other things i want to quickly show you now the first one is a trip down um, memory lane for me because this is actually the very first cross stitch pattern i started so after i found cross stitch via the route of diamond painting by rachel ray and then through rachel ray michelle bendy and blah 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 um i went to a local knitting store near me and they had a cross stitch section and they had this so it's um simply heritage it's the antagonist it's peter underhill and I naively thought, oh, that's a nice one. That won't take long. But it's full coverage. It's nothing but blends. It's This is all blends. Um, yeah, it was a full pack. It had the um, all the threads and everything in there and the material. It's just a bog standard 14 piece Ada. And it is a really tiny thing. But it's all blends and backstitch. And I somehow managed... <laughs> to do all of the stitching and I did all of the outlines of the birds and then I was like I can't take it anymore I want to move on to something simpler so that's when I moved on to Lindy Stitches the um the plant one that's um the little shop of horror type plant one and then I moved on to other things and then I lost this I could not find this because I wanted to put it in my stitchy journal. Well, I wanted to finish it for starters and put it in my stitchy journal. Couldn't find it for love and money. And then the other week, I was going through some of my paperwork to find some insurance documents. And for some bizarre reason, I put this in a one of these and whacked it in with my paperwork. So I found it. And here we go. How cute is that? I'm just impressed that all my stitches are going the same way, to be perfectly honest. So I'm going to frog out this horrific attempt at backstitch on this bird here and redo it. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to work my way through each of these birds and get this done and then put it in my stitchy journal. But I was... I mean... The stitches aren't brilliant, but it's not too bad. And I don't think the I think the blending came out quite well. Quite yeah, I'm quite happy with that. So yeah, I'll get that finished and I can pop that in my own little stitchy journal. So that's one thing I want to do this month. The other is I want to start. In fact, I'm probably going to start this tonight if I get this done in time. Is my next Cricut collection. Um, season which is spring there we go this is in all DMC and I have got this this is a witch ult ready to do it on so it's got a little I don't kind of coming across it's it's a bit yellowy um, but yeah so that's what I'm going to be doing it on that's a 28 count so that it'll be the same as all my others i don't think i've got any of them up here it's, it's in the lounge but yeah so i'm going to start on that and then potentially i will have one other start potentially i'm not 100 percent sure yet but it's going to be oh, I, love, I love 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 this bag from the same place as this one and this one <laughs> Um, it's Hollandse Merklap, it's um, Jeanette Douglas Designs, this one, I think it's brilliant that, so this could be a potential of a new start. So that's my whips, my plans, whip go, 
And now let's move on to purchases. Now I did say that, um, oh God, it's all in my eye. Uh, I did say that I haven't made any purchase any patterns and that is 100% correct. I have not so far purchased any patterns. However, I'm gonna because <laughs> things have not been brilliant the past few weeks. Um, I've come out the other side now. This morning resolved, I got a resolution on everything this morning. So um, yeah, um, I am going to be buying two patterns. Um, I'm going to insert a picture of one of them because um, the picture of it is actually on my phone phone, which is what I'm recording this on. But the other one is another, um, let me just bring it up for you. It's another prairie moon one basically I'm going to I'm going to get. Um, so I have it's zombies. Oh, oh it's lo and behold is the new is the title of the new long dog one, just in case anybody wants to have a look at it. Um actually I think there's um there's a couple, there's a couple I want to buy, but I know I want to buy the one that I've just inserted. Um, oh, wow. Where is it on here? Have we got, um, I've not written it down on here. Oh, that's annoying. Right. Okay. I'm going to insert the picture and the name of it underneath. And what you will see is that it is very similar to this which I just absolutely love which is why I want to get started on this now I've finally got all the threads I want in so it they're very similar styles which is why I want I wanted to get it so there's that one and then I want to get um another crypt club one so I can I can have a full series of them so anyway that's what I'm wanting to purchase but I've got no new purchases to show you because I have actually been really good. <laughs> okay, so moving on from that. So that's plans, purchases. Um, done that, done that. Okay, so what I have been doing, however, is looking through magazines because I've not been buying any new patterns. About a month ago, I bought a CD, yes, a CD, which was the Sampler and Antique Needleworks 1991 to 2015. And I've been going through those patterns, but I also had my subscription from Punch Needle and Primitive. So there's quite a few patterns on there. Um, primarily, Lindy Stitches and her Cats at Play or whatever she's called, The Season. So there's four of them that she did last year. I've been looking at them and I absolutely love them as well. So what I thought I might do, maybe not for another couple of weeks or whatever, I might do a short video of some of the, show you the pictures of some of the patterns that I've seen in, in these. And it could be that you see something that you really like as well. But there's, for what they've cost me, for the number of patterns I've already seen, and I'm not even, even a quarter of the way through the sampler and antique ones and the same with them, um, with the, um, punch needle and primitive one and the amount of patterns that I'm wanting to sew now it's like it, you know it's probably going to be a while before I'm going to be um uh, one needing to buy any other patterns I mean I probably will buy other patterns let's let's face it I mean I'm going to hold off on buying any for another couple of months other than the ones I've already mentioned but there's so many lovely patterns in them that I thought I might just do a quick video to show you some of the ones that are in those magazines so that if you see any that you like that maybe you could go out and buy the magazine yourself but anyway so that's something I've been doing for the past couple of weeks and um, but I've also been listening to quite a few um books um so I've gotten back into history now I have a degree in history so I've always loved history but I've but I was so there's a um, historian here in England called Dan Jones, who is he's um, done quite a few TV series, but he's actually released some books which I didn't know. 
and they're really really good so one is called power powers and thrones and then there's another one called the plantagenets they're long hefty books but my god he's a good writer and he's a good narrator as well so he's narrating his own books and they're just being brilliant so you know it's all about kings and queens of england and of of old and it's just it's just fascinating absolutely loving them also alice roberts um she's done one um, called ancestors and another one called tamed so she's coming at it from an anthropological point of view I'm absolutely fascinating so i have listened to ancestors which was brilliant and i'm part way through tamed which is all it basically it takes eight key things that have kind of been tamed um over the millennia and from what they were to what they are now so one of them is for example dogs from wolves to how we change them and it also covers things like wheat how it from wild wheat to what it's now and how that impacted you know impacted things I'm giving you a rubbish summation there, but if you're fascinated in that kind of thing, you will love these books because I have, I am really enjoying it. And like I said, the ancestors one, just brilliant. And um, so that basically it covers um, for the British Isles. It goes from when um, like Neanderthals were first here all the way tracking through to you know it's our ancestors basically and it is it's just brilliant so yeah so that's what i've been and um, listened to and a new one that i've just started listening to by alice roberts and it's called vanish um what is it surprise kill vanish and it's basically all about the roots of the cia um how it started and how it's yeah another one that is absolutely fascinating so it's just good listening for when when you're sewing. Um it's just it's just fascinating listening to have on as you as you're doing it. But anyway, yes, yeah, so that is my stitchy stuff, my plans, um all my whips and you know, all of them. <laughs> I know I've been through a lot of them this month. But what I'm gonna move on to now is life. So for anyone who's not interested, I hope you've enjoyed the stitching that I have shown. Um, I hope you can see that even when you do make mistakes, that it's not the end of the world. And sometimes, yes, you do have to frog things out. But other times, no, you can, you know, make it your own, <laughs> as many people do. Because um, I... I don't know what it is. I think it's because I'm too busy looking ahead. It's like I'm, I'm the same when I'm reading. I'll skip ahead and you end up missing stuff and having to go back. And oh, apparently it's the same with stitching for me. So, yeah, sometimes it is a case of you do have. I mean, for that, um, you, belo um, you belong to me. For the very kind lady who pointed that out to me, you have no idea how thankful I am because otherwise it... I hadn't even really noticed, even though once it had been pointed out, it was bloody obvious. It was like, oh, of course it's wrong. But I would never have noticed that and it would have thrown the entire thing off. And if I had have then noticed it, the amount of frogging I would have had to do would have been absolutely horrendous. But sometimes, yes, you do have to frog, but other times, yeah, you don't need to frog. But anyway, <clears throat> that's all my stitching stuff out of the way. So now... Like I said, if that's you now done, thank you very much for watching so far. And as I said, if you do like it, please do like and subscribe. And for anyone who is interested in a life update, sit back, sit back, buckle in and enjoy the ride. I certainly have not enjoyed it, but you know, there you go. So let's start off with my cat, Tabby, my gorgeous, white tabby cat so she went for her annual inspection <laughs> for her vaccination and she had lost a little bit of weight so i was i'd taken her to get her checked out and that and the vet even the vet said no she has lost some weight now a couple of months ago she went through a period where well maybe about four 
five months ago she went through a period where she was over grooming and she was a little bit stressed but then she got over it because we were at that that was the point where my last job things had gone absolutely horrendously so the entire house was I was just stress filled and uh, you know cats pick up on these uh, pets pick up on these things so I just thought that was what it was then she seemed to get over it and you know I thought the bit of weight she had lost was from that and since she didn't seem to have lost any more weight she went in for this and the vet said well look let's do some bloods on her let's double check it's nothing else and then the first round of blood tests came back and like, look, it could potentially be diabetes. But I needed to do another set of blood tests just to get, a, you know, an actual diagnosis. And it turns out that, yes, it is diabetes. So the issue is I have no problem giving injections to, to cats because my very first cat, Indy, she got diabetes and she lived till she was almost 20 years old so she went for the last six or seven years of her life getting these injections i gladly did it it meant my entire life revolved around half seven a.m half seven and seven thirty p.m because those were when i would do the injections but for indy it was very easy because she was one of those cats where she would just let you do anything to her. So you could just walk up to her and you'd pick her up and she'd be like, okay, whatever. Put her down on the top. She wouldn't move away. You just gave her a tiny little um, bit of meat or something like that. She'd take the injection and then she'd toddle off and be absolutely fine. And it's the same if you were taken to the vet or anything else. She wouldn't run off on one. She wouldn't, you know, she'd just be like, yeah, just get it done. But Tabby is not that kind of cat. I think because of things that happened to her when she was young, she needed a lot of procedures doing. She had a bad hernia when I got her. And she had a very bad incident with her leg that needed a lot of veterinary intervention and a lot of back and forth, back and forth and stitches. And she needed to go back in for some. Anyway, it basically means that unless she can see that you're in a position where you can't easily capture her or it's obvious that you're not going to be taking her back to the vet or something or doing something to her. She can be very skittish around you. And especially now, considering that every time I've got hold of her, she's had to go to the vet. I knew it was going to be an issue. And with Tabby as well, if I need to get her to do her nails, oh my God, you'd think I was trying to kill her. So I'm fine doing cat's nails by myself. I can do it for all of my other cats, the other four of them. No problem. Just get them, put them under your arm, hold them in a certain way, clip the nails and it's done. But with Tabby now, it's got to the point where she gets so stressed out about it and so like <sighs> that I have to take her to the vets or the groomers for... When one person's holding her, she calms down completely and you can do it, no problem, but... I just knew that this is what it was going to be like trying to give her an injection. A, there'd be the stress of trying to capture her and B, once I had got her, she would fight like hell and it would make giving this injection stressful for her, stressful for me, then it'd be like this vicious circle of stress. So I would do it, you know, I love this cat like anything, so I'll do it, but I just felt for her it was just going to be a bloody nightmare. So I was stressing out about that. <laughs> and it turns out I was stressing out over absolutely nothing. Because what I figured out very early was all I need to do, feed them. Just before I feed them, I shut my bedroom door, the lounge door and another room where there's places that if she was, so for example, if she were to get behind the sofa or if she were to get under my bed, then it'd be a nightmare to get her out of. So I just, and the bathroom, so I just shut these doors, feed them, let her eat, cover up the cat flap, sort out the injection, getting it ready, put it down, put a few little pieces of meat down for just tiny little pieces. Then once she's finished eating, so I don't grab her while she's eating because that's not fair because then she'll be skittish when she's eating and then that'll cause a ton of problems. I do that. 
And when she's finished eating, I just come up to her and then we just have a gentle stroll around the rest of the house until she gets in a hallway or a room where she has to get back past me to get out. And then she just kind of gives up and lies down. I pick her up, put her on the top. She stays put. She sees she's got a treat there. I inject her. She eats the treat. She's gone. Oh my God. I mean, even when I'm trying to catch her, it's just like a stroll around the house. And when I have picked her up, her heart's not racing. She's not that stressed about it. I put her on the top, do the injection, and it's done. So I went through a couple of days of stressing about this and being really concerned and wondering how I was going to do this, blah, blah, blah. And it was like a piece of bloody cake. Thank God for her. But yeah. I get and I get some extra exercise as well because she sometimes she has me up and down the stairs about four times. <laughs> but anyway, so that's the cat. So no, it's not brilliant that she's got diabetes, but at least we're in a position where we can do the injections and it's not gonna totally stress her out. So next, plumbing. Now not my plumbing, which we all know is totally put anyway, and I'm feeling that today as well, which is why I'm on bloody strong painkillers but my boiler and again not talking about me <laughs> my actual boiler and my toilet there was something wrong with both of them so I had the plumber out and it turned out there were leaks and there's issues with I'm gonna have to get floorboards pulled up and oh my god so that was a thing but now that's fixed so that's sorted then there was something devastating and this is the loss of my stitchy spot I know I know devastating so my stitchy spot is one side of the sofa and I have my um Lowry stand that comes over the arm and it's on the right you know the correct side for me because my Right hand goes under the stitching, my left hand goes on top, so you pass up and down like that, and it's all perfectly positioned, and all my different accoutrements are all around me, you know, my lamp, and it's perfect. But it's an old sofa that's had a lot of use. Um, for a while it was also my office, because with my coccyx, it was the only thing that was comfortable to sit on. So the cushioning on it is going a bit, and I thought the actual sofa was going a bit. So I called up the people who I bought it from eight, nine years ago, and they said, oh, we can come out, have a look, see if there's something wrong with the mechanism, in which case you're still under the 10 year guarantee, and we can fix it for you. Or if it's cush the cushioning, we can get you replacement cushioning. You don't need to get a new sofa. So they came out, it's not the mechanism, that's all tip top. That's absolutely fine. It's a cushioning because it's now in a place where it's starting to get a little bit uncomfortable. So they said, well, look, we can put this extra stuff in there for now and maybe that'll help. So they did that. It was so bloody uncomfortable. It was untrue. And I was like, what the hell? So I've had to, I'm having to buy a brand new cushion for it. That's going to be weeks for it to come. So I've had to switch size on the sofa. Now, that's a bit like having to switch sides in bed. It's not good. It is not good. And obviously, this other side has not been moulded to my ample backside. So, it's, you know, it's going to take a bit of time for it to get comfortable. And then, we have the whole thing with the Lowry stand, which is now on the wrong bloody side of the sofa. So, I can't be doing with that. And I can't have it on this side again because I, it's not back enough because obviously the sofa's there and ugh, it's a whole thing. Because obviously Lowry stands are designed to come across you like that. So last night I thought I'd get radical. You know, I thought I was being smart with this, but it'll, you know, there'll be loads of you out there going, Catherine, I've been using my Lowry stand like this for years. But I haven't and sometimes I'm a little bit slow on the uptake on these things. Put the Lowry stand so it's facing me. Switch the clamp from, because I've at the moment got it on the corner clamp. Switched it to the side clamp. 
put my cue snap at an angle and of course it comes right up to me. Problem solved. Again. Yeah. So that's something else that's been, you know, making my January not the most ideal start to the new year. And then we have the last thing, the best thing, the thing that just kind of not only was the icing on the cake, but was the, all the rest of the cake as well, just completely obliterates everything else. And that is on the 20th of this month, I got made redundant. Yep. So, for those of you who've been following my story for a while, you will know that all of up until about September of last year, I was going through sheer hell with the previous job. And I've just sent off all my tribunal stuff this last week. So that's still a little bit ongoing, but that's not what's been an issue here. Um, this new job, I was on a self-employed basis. I was contracted and just started talks with them to switch over to be on a permanent contract with them. They were just saying, yeah, we want you to do this, this, this and this. And I was getting ready to do that. And then they brought in a new CEO and they've now decided that they're changing direction. And my services, unfortunately, because I was the last I, I was the last one in in my position. And because handily for them, I was on a self-employed contract. Yeah. So they were like, yeah. From, you know, we'll pay you up until the end of the month and then, yep, yeah, bye. So, <laughs> I think I got to a point now where it's like, I should have expected this to happen. I'd been, you know, yep, yeah, that, so that happened again. And everything just went out the window. Um, because I've not been able to tell my parents because... They were just as stressed as I was about what happened from the last one. And if I were to tell them that I'd lost my job again, it would not have been fair to them. So I've not told them about it. Um, I, honestly, just not knowing what to say about it because it's just, you just couldn't write it. But the other thing is as well, is I've not wanted to moan and groan about it because, again, and I've said this previously as well, yes, I know I can vent about it, I know I can be pissed off about it, but I am still in a very lucky position, the fact that I've got a roof over my head. For the months that I have been working at the place I've just left, I was able to put aside enough money to see me through for a couple of months until I found something new. But it was still a case of, I've got to find a new job. Now, on that front, I got a little bit lucky in the fact that the woman who actually asked me to come and work here, she felt awful. And this isn't her fault. It's not her that's made this decision. And, she, you know, it's not her fault whatsoever. And, I, and I've actually and I've told on several occasions I do not blame her in any way, shape or form because she's a lovely woman I've worked with her previously. That's why I came to work there because, you know, I really love her. Um, but she did her best to try and find me something else. And this morning I went for final chat with this person and I start there on the 14th of February so I've decided to take two weeks I'm not going to be paid for it but like I said I've got some money put aside so I've decided to take the next two weeks to just organize myself for this new one because the job role it's still doing what I do but it's actually going to be a little bit better I mean I'm, I'm touching wood on that and I'm trying not to get two because with my look at the moment I'm just but it could be really good and Give me two weeks just to get the thing, you know, to decompress and then so the, this week to decompress, then next week to organise myself and to get things ready, then the 14th of February, I think that's the Monday, just to hit the ground running on it. So yeah, so there was 10 days of sheer stress and with everything else going on as well and just can't believe this is happening again kind of thing. And then... um this morning, 
you know, also added to the fact that I'm, my endometriosis is kicking my literal ass at the moment. But then this morning, sheer relief when it was like, yeah, so when can you start? We'll have you whenever you want. You know, if you want to start now, we'll start now. If you want to start in two weeks, start in two weeks, that's fine. So, yeah, so that's done. So I found a new job starting on, on February the 14th. So that is why a week, um, I was going to do it yesterday, but then I thought, no, I just want to get today out of the way. I was going to do it last week, kind of like, I can't, I'm just not in the right frame of mind because I, at that point I'd not spoken to this guy, I didn't even know if this guy was going to contact me. So I was just stressing out about the fact that what was I going to do? Um, so that wasn't the right time to do it either. But today I feel like it's like if stress was steam it'd be like coming off me like nobody's business and I've got my new necklace I wanted to show you as well because I absolutely love it <laughs> but anyway yes so that is what's been going on in my life this month so here's hoping <laughs> that the rest of 2022 is a bit calmer so I'm going to leave it at that because this has now gone over an hour um, and I had not, and I was hoping to keep on. I thought I would, I thought I'd gone at a really good pace with all my stitching, but you know, I like to talk. Um, I hope that you are all okay. I hope that 2022 is, I'm not going to jinx it for everyone and say, yeah, I hope we all have an amazing 2022. I hope 22, 2022 is a bit better than 2021, a lot better than 2020. And we get by and, you know, if it's great, it's great. If it's okay, then that's brilliant as well. I hope you get lots of stitching done. <laughs> and I hope you are all safe and well. Um, as usual, um, any questions or any comments are always welcome. I'm sorry. Again, I'm sorry if I didn't respond to a comment that you left on my last video, but I left that video and then literally a couple of days later, I, that video was done and then a couple of days later I found out what was happening and then just everything just kind of, yeah. So I do apologise for that, but as always, I'm very grateful for any comments. I just love interacting with people. So I'm going to leave it there. Um... Hopefully I will do another one in possibly three weeks. I think I wanted to do it maybe every three weeks. That was a good, that that to me was a good thing. Um, so we'll see. <laughs> Plans never seem to go as planned. Um, but yeah, I love you. I love you all. And if you've made it to the end, well done. You deserve some kind of present for that. <laughs> um, but I will hopefully see you soon and happy stitching.